atmospheric pressure. So gas and pressure has to do with our weather as well. Variations in pressure in the Earth's atmosphere cause wind. But you've probably heard, you know, if you ever listen to the weather, talk about a low pressure system moving in or a high pressure system. And based on those pressure systems, um, meteorologists can predict to a certain extent what's going to happen with the weather. High pressure is generally associated with clear weather. Low pressure is uh, often unstable, and that's when you get precipitation and storms and things. So the, the atmospheric pressure varies a little bit, even at sea level, as the weather changes. But the most noticeable changes in atmospheric pressure are when you go up in elevation. So if you drive up the hill to Kings Canyon, which I wouldn't recommend that you do right now because the rough fire is still burning up there, there is a decrease in atmospheric pressure as your altitude increases. You say the air is thinner. Um, the pressure exerted by a gas, as, as I mentioned before, depends on the number of gas particles. If we look at these two mason jars, um, this jar has fewer particles, this has more particles. Um, if these particles are moving at the same speed, each of them is going to collide with the wall at a given rate. Um, more particles means more collisions and means higher pressure. So up in the mountains at higher elevations, the air is thinner, there's less molecules, and so the pressure is lower. Um, you've probably had your ears pop in response to a change in elevation. We're touching on all kinds of other aspects of science today. Here's, here's a biology for you. Um, inside your ear is an eardrum that separates the inner ear from the outer ear. And so when the external pressure is reduced because you went up in elevation, your, the pressure inside your ear is the same as it was before. And so it causes your eardrum to bulge outward. This is uncomfortable. That's what causes babies to scream on, on airplanes. If you have an ear infection, it can be excruciating because the relief for this is when you yawn or chew gum and you get your eustachian tube to open and let some of that pressure out. And that's what we experience as popping. Of course, your eardrum isn't popping, but you're just getting that sensation of popping as your eustachian tube lets the air out. The reverse happens when you come back down then the pressure inside is lower than outside, and so your eardrum bulges the other way. I don't know about you, but I have a harder time getting my ears to pop that way than I do going up. So I come down from the mountains, and I walk around, and I can't hear anything for like 12 hours. It's not very fun. Um, any questions about that? One of the cool things I think about chemistry is that it explains a lot of stuff that we observe in everyday life. Well, how do we measure uh, gas pressure? One tool is a barometer. A barometer measures atmospheric pressure. Um, the average atmospheric pressure at sea level is 760 millimeters of mercury. So a millimeter of mercury, that seems like a strange unit for pressure, right? Isn't that the length of an element? How do you have a length of an element? Well, this is a, a diagram of a very simple barometer. Um, and it can be made by taking a long test tube. It needs to be about three feet long. A long test tube of um, mercury. And um, originally, they would stick the thumb over it and invert it into a dish of mercury. Uh, now we know that mercury is toxic, and so that probably would be frowned upon. What happens is that some of the mercury then runs out of the tube into the dish, leaving a vacuum here. But not all of the wa water, not all of the mercury runs out. About 760 millimeters, a height above this dish here, above the liquid in the dish, of about 760 millimeters, that's about 29.92 inches, 
will remain. And why does it stay? It stays because atmospheric pressure is pushing down on this mercury and supporting the column. The column of mercury is being pulled down by the force of gravity, but atmospheric pressure here is opposing all of it coming out. And so we can measure this, and it doesn't matter how wide the tube is, that height of the column is always going to be close to 760 millimeters of mercury. And that is normal atmospheric pressure at sea level. If we have higher atmospheric pressure, then the column, huh, pointer, come on, the column gets higher. You can use your imagination. If the atmospheric pressure is lower, then the column gets shorter. Well, millimeter of mercury, although it's still used as a pressure unit, um, is uh, not the preferred unit anymore. Um, we have tor. Having issues here with my computer. Come on, I let you sleep in. So they gave the unit one millimeter of mercury a new name, one Tor, and that's named after Torricelli, who was the one who did the most um, interesting and significant experiments using the barometer. Um, so he's given credit as inventing the barometer. Um, this apparatus had been used before, but not to measure pressure. Uh, it had been noticed more as a novelty and as a way to create a vacuum, but he was the one that discovered that there was an atmospheric pressure. So one tor equals one millimeter of mercury. So here are some other common units of pressure. Um, Pascal, uh, we don't use that much in chemistry. It's more of a physics uh, unit. One newton per square meter. And there we see the force per unit area definition of pressure. Um, it's abbreviated PA. And um, average air pressure at sea level is a really large number of pascals. They'll often use kilopascals, and so it'll be 101.3 kilopascals. You've probably heard of pounds per square inch. PSI stands for pounds square inch, pounds per square inch. 14.7 um, is atmospheric pressure. Here's the tor. Remember, a tor and a millimeter of mercury, different names for exactly the same unit. Um, and the tor, 760 tor, exactly is exactly one atmosphere. We defined it that way. Another unit is inches of mercury. Um, again, a height of mercury, but using the metric English unit inches. And this is what the weatherman will report barometric pressure in, or atmospheric pressure. He'll report it in inches. So he might say, you know, barometric pressure today is, you know, 30.1 and falling. And he means 30.1 inches and, and changing. And then the other unit is the atmosphere. And that's abbreviated ATM, which always makes me think of an ATM machine, but this is just atmospheres. And one atmosphere is average pressure at sea level. So in this table, all of these values are equal to each other. One atmosphere is exactly equal to 760 tor. The other units are not exact. And so because of how they generally list these pressure units, pressure conversions can be done in one step, which is kind of nice. Um, I guess you might be interested in what do I have to know? You should know that one atmosphere is exactly equal to 760 tor, which is the same as 760, bless you, millimeters of mercury. Bless you again. Um, you should know this one. You're going to use it enough that you'll probably remember it even without trying, but that one I expect you to know. The others, you don't need to know. We'll look them up if we need them. Okay, let's practice converting pressure units. Your local weather report announces that the barometric pressure is 30.44 inches of mercury. It looks like 30.44 in mercury, but it's inches. Convert this pressure to PSI. Um, so here we have a list of the pressure conversions. So
So these can be done in just one step. So we've got 30.44 inches of mercury, and we want PSI. So I'll put PSI in the top and inches of mercury in the bottom. And then I just look in, the, in this listing, and I see that 14.7 PSI is equal to 29.92 inches of mercury. So 14.7, 29.92. I have to get out my calculator. And so my calculator is telling me fourteen point nine five five blah blah blah. That would be PSI. How many significant figures should that number have? It should have three. Um, our initial pressure was four sig figs. These conversions are not exact. Only the 760 is exact. Um, so 14.7 limits us to three sig figs. Now, if you looked it up somewhere else, it's actually 14.69. You can get a more accurate conversion. Then you could use that. We're going to round this to what? 15.0. 15.0 PSI. Any questions? Measuring barometric, the atmospheric pressure is nice, but sometimes we have a gas inside of a container and we want to know how, how pressurized that is. Of course, there are pressure gauges like you would use on your uh, tires. Um, but those aren't so useful when you've got a gas stuck in a glass flask. So the manometer is a very simple instrument um, that allows us to measure the pressure inside of a container relative to atmospheric pressure outside the manometer. So we have a, a U-shaped tube partially filled with a liquid, sometimes mercury or you can use water or other liquids as well, and connected to the gas sample on one side and open to the air on the other side. So in this example, we have pressurized gas in this flask, and the other end of this tube is op open to the atmosphere, and we have a liquid in the tube. Now, if both of these ends of the tube were open to the atmosphere, then the liquid would sink so that b the level on both sides is the same. But because there's pressure here, it's forcing the liquid down on this side, and up on that side. So we just use a ruler, literally, and measure the difference in the heights of these columns of liquid. And depending on the liquid, is, what it is, um, that we can convert that into a pressure unit. If it's mercury, you read it in millimeters, and there you have it in millimeters of mercury. Any questions? <laughs>